All right, spring is here, 2021. So we're looking at trying to add a wardrobe to this road track. So this is an aftermarket wardrobe that was probably built 10 or 15 years ago using the same material as uh, road track used uh, down in the Kitchener Waterloo area, I believe. But uh, just trying to figure out how to mount it. So the hard part initially was getting that uh, drawer out. Eventually I found that you had to pull the drawer all the way forward and then take the screws out of the sides because it didn't have enough space to pull it forward and get it out of there. But there are, uh, you can remove the slides but there's not enough space to get the drawer out directly. So uh, I did that, then there's three bolts holding the uh, bottom seat cushion in. But what I found is that the bottom seat base is kind of separating from the van a bit. There's a bunch of screws in there. So I think someone's had this part before. But I'm not clear to me as to whether the person that built this uh, wardrobe understood that there's a, a bevel to this seat base. So if you push it all the way against the bathroom wall, you end up with a gap. Like they cut a gap for the seat belt, but I'm not sure what's going on here. This would be a bit of a project to figure this thing out. So I checked with like a piece of paper with a square just to verify that like the guy did cut a square edge on here instead of a bevel. And then, uh, yeah, I didn't pay much for this. I think it's the last one in existence on the retail market. It's a floor model, so I don't really mind it. Van's full of stuff right now. We sold our house. So there's uh, just three bolts holding the base on. And they're just a uh, headrest is just velcroed on and then the back just had the slides just lift it up and pull it out. You can access the slide from the uh, bathroom if you remove that cover there. I might put some carriage bolts in behind that plate into this wardrobe. But the neat thing about the wardrobe is that it, it matches the material of the van, kind of matches the height here hook won't work anymore but there's a big gap there's like a three inch gap for some reason that uh, got built into it so trying to figure out how to make this thing safe is the other issue because you can't just have it flying out of the van if you get into an accident so might put a bolt through here but I don't want to damage the van Sorry about that, got interrupted. I was just talking to the uh, owner of the storage place here about uh, when we're going to move out the vehicle because we're parked up in front of another camper. They're not in a hurry apparently, so no big deal. So uh, trying to figure out how to mount this in the vehicle so that it's safe. So if as it at least stays in position when you're braking hard, or, right? So uh, it's all kind of glued and nailed together so it's not super strong. There is like a a piece here we could probably put some carriage bolts through it. I don't want to damage the uh, side of the bathroom so the other option would be to have like a slot here so you can drop some carriage bolts with fender washers into this guide to kind of match up with that. But, uh, I'm not certain if that's the, the right solution either. Kind of up in the air trying to figure this thing out. So it comes, uh, it's kind of convertible. It has a, uh, a rod in here, as well as a probably uh, five shelves. You can switch back and forth and do whatever you want to do with it. I've got a second battery carrier in here, some other stuff. I bought this from, uh, I can't think of the name of the place I bought it from, but I'll post uh, some instructions on how to find them. Because they do make aftermarket road truck parts, like they make the ground effects parts and battery trays and stuff like that. So uh, I don't think they make these anymore though, but uh, not a big deal. Cause I don't think there would be a big market for these cause this was kind of easy to purchase. So uh, gonna kind of strap this down, 
go to Home Depot and get some supplies and uh, figure out how I'm going to uh, attach this to the vehicle and try to reattach this base. The base is good and secure in the fact that the uh, seat belts are like an engineered part holding it down. So maybe we could hook onto them somehow. I don't know, just kind of come up with ideas as we go here. So I'll get back to you when we got something figured out. All right, so I got uh, working on the van now here. So I got some supplies from my uh, garage. Looks like what I'm gonna do is just put two bolts through here that are about four inches long and into the cabinet for the time being. It just happens to be a good Friday and everything is closed and that is okay by me. But it, it's also the beginning of another like four week lockdown so I can't get any supplies so I gotta kinda work with what I've got. So uh, for whatever reason the seat was leaning forward and then this uh, drawer would kinda collide with the floor. If there was any rocks no way it would scratch them. So I started, uh, I thought I'd take this apart, try to reattach a little bit better. I found that there's a piece of oak kind of glued to one of the uh, floor channels here. Then there's a road truck fiberglass tray. You can see the part number there for that. Not that it would be easy to replace this, but you can see how it's sort of built. So they chop out the floor and uh, sink it down a couple inches and put in this uh, waterproof tray in its place. So I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, mahogany down on top of this. It looks like there was some glue here for some reason. Not too sure what's happening. But uh, I'm going to get this so that it's flush because right now it is not. I don't know whose work that is. But I'm going to correct it. Like I said, someone's had this apart a few times. So I'm just going to deal with it here now. So uh, I'll get this reattached. And we'll start working on the uh, putting in the wardrobe. Here right, I got my piece of mahogany cut out. It ends up being pretty much the right thickness, just like that. So that fixes that problem. So and then I just cut the blisters off of this plastic lamination on the wood because it's hidden behind the uh, cabinet. And it looks like it's not super thick. It's a bit deceiving depending where you look. Because uh, like right here, looks like it might be an inch thick. That could be accurate. Obviously you don't want to go too far through. But there's, then there's a little pantry for the bottom like three inches here. You could slide stuff in underneath the toilet. So I might uh, put some bigger bolts through the bottom to support this thing. Because it seems to be a long term problem. Although there's not going to be anybody sitting on it anymore in the future. And this is going to be bolted to the wall, so it may not be all that important. But I want to try to get it right, and then that drawer will work correctly. So I guess I'll slide this thing back into position and attach it back to the van. Alright, so a bit of uh, sanding and filing on that piece of uh, 16th inch mahogany there. I was able to get things to sit flat. There's a little bit of a lip here. As close as I could get it without spending an enormous amount of time on it. So uh, when you put the screws in the bottom you want them as deep as you can so that they don't rub in the bottom of the uh, drawer. It would have been better if I had some kind of uh, me sheet metal screws so I could have had longer ones and forced them through but just not available today. So uh, it's good enough. But it could be a little bit better. Essentially, it's uh, it's screwed down nice and solid for what we need to do. So I'm going to put the uh, drawer back in and then start focusing on the uh, wardrobe. Just getting the screws into the drawer here now. So for the first two screws, you can just uh, easily access them. For the back two, you need to trip this lever and push this all the way back. And then you'll be able to get to the rest of them. So I'm just going to do that now. Things are sliding fine right now. There's no weight on it or anything. But uh, we got some clearance. It's not really focusing very well. But uh, if I keep getting rocks trapped under that, I'll have to stop bringing rocks in. And then I might just trim this down or trim it up a little bit to uh, stop that or maybe readjust. 
the uh, where this attaches to the drawer. There's just like half a dozen screws there. You could take this off and re reinstall it. All right, last little clip of the drawer. So it's working nice now. He is rubbing on these uh, screws near the face. Not much I can do about that. Other than I guess I could grind them down, but then it'd be hard to remove. But uh, that's looking good. Happy with that. So I gotta grab hold of this wardrobe and slide it up here. All right, got the wardrobe roughly into position now, so the seatbelt won't be overly useful. It follows the same contour as the uh, piece below, more or less. This flips up to aid in using this other thing that flips up. I think that's related to uh, sleeping in the vehicle. If you have the uh, extra cushions, you could spin that seat around and sleep in here, but I don't know. Not with, uh, I don't think it works that way when you take the seat out. I could be wrong. So that's there, you can see that it it's just a bit wider than the door. Same width as the bottom half of the door. And it's off by uh, about a half an inch on the back. Still trying to get this perfectly fitting in here before I drill it and put the bolts through. It's uh, a bit of a mystery to me why these gaps are the way they are. I'm not sure they're just copying the road truck part when they made this. I think there was uh, some legal issues with the guy who was doing this and making these aftermarket ones. So I'm going to have to make something to hold that up in the back, I think. I don't think I want to rely on the bolts to hold that up. And uh, I'll be one step closer to having this done. It's drilled through the cabinet there with a quarter inch bit and I uh, used like a four inch long uh, fine thread bolt, like a quarter or twenty. So it turns out this piece of metal isn't in as solid as I thought. It just is sitting here. And then there's some uh, rubber plugs that you put in the corner and then that just holds it in place. But it's uh, the best I got for right now. So I'm gonna carry on here and we'll get this thing tightened up. All right, so we're just about done. I decided to take a second to think about what I was doing. And I decided to add some of these uh, rubber bumpers. They're not gonna be the prettiest thing, but at least the wardrobe's not gonna wear a hole through the uh, cabinetry in the van if I decide to put the uh, seat back in. So I decided to put those on here and I'll get uh, things tightened up now. All right, so that's how it looks on the inside of the cabinet, just two fender washers on the quarter 20 screws. And uh, about the right length there, it's gonna fit once I put everything back together. But that only ties it in on the back. So if you're going down some rough road, it's gonna be kind of wiggling around. So I think I'm gonna put a couple screws through the base towards the front to uh, prevent any more movement than necessary. I think that'll be all I can do. All right, so that's the finished product here. So I decided to put in the uh, shelves. The shelves are all different lengths. There's uh, three that come with the kit. And I put uh, two bolts through the bottom. Those ones are a bit too long, so they're not actually fastened, but they'll do the job to keep things in position. And the reason I put in the shelves there is because we already have uh, the closet here that we don't really use too much. Oh, it has a different kind of clothes hanger. I might actually move the other one in there or just buy a clothes hanger kit because that thing is not easy to use. And that one will be easier. This is going to be a bit wobbly. Once I figure out the right height for these shelves, I'm going to put in some caulking to affix them into position. It's got the same snap as some of the other cabinets like the uh, AV center. For this I got different clips. I don't know if they're called Russo or what brand they were, but uh, you get them at the hardware store. There's two different sizes of holes, so you have to take a look at that when you're picking them out. I do remember these ones being much tighter, 
but they are uh, a different color. I couldn't find white ones easily. I have these remnants of the other ones here. Paw prints in there. Should I clean this out? So, anyway, hopefully uh, this has been useful. If you go to a, a wrecker and find one of these, or somehow come up with uh, one of these things and you want to put it in your vehicle, hopefully this is helpful. So, thank you for watching.